It was my best day ever. Who wants a shot, baby? Come on, you gotta celebrate, right? You only get married once. You know, until, until you turn 40 and you trade in for the newer, sleeker, better looking model. All right, so best man down deals with a little bit of a morbid topic, but it does it in a certain way. So how do you make <clears> the topic <throat> both funny and emotional? Hmm, <clears throat> well, I think first you need an actor like Tyler who can do that sort of heavy lifting, who can, um, who can imbue uh, a drunken buffoon with as much uh, humanity as, he, as he's done and can commit to something like that. That's really important because if you, just some guy, like you, you, you have to care for him in the beginning. And it, and it was a real feat because all he was asked to do was be the drunken asshole at the wedding. <laughs> and, uh, asshole? Yeah, I never viewed him no, as an asshole. Okay. No. Drunk, yeah. drunken and maybe like sad, sad, sad misguided shit, individual. Yeah, shithead. Some curse. Yeah. We got a word about <laughs> curse. It, Something that they can't air. <clears throat> uh, yeah, drunk, but drunken fuck face. There you go. Yeah. All right. <laughs> but you. <clears throat> but, but it couldn't just be that, or else because, it, like you said, the rest <clears throat> of the movie is um, it takes kind of a morbid turn, and, and I'm, my character is <clears throat> discovering who this guy is, and if the guy is at the outset, you don't care about him. Um, or there's not something, there's not like a hint of something redeeming and likable in him, then the whole movie is, is a, a wash, as they say in the mm -hmm. Midwest. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Did you just fall asleep with your eyes open? Mm -hmm. <laughs> so I still am, yeah. <clears throat> All right, so, now Tyler, is it easy to play that drunk? Because I kind of feel like, you know. <laughs> oh no. Because you kind of feel like it is? Is that what you're gonna say? <laughs> is that, is it no, 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 heavens no, man. I did, I did that, honestly, the research involved with playing <laughs> this kind of drunk may or may not mirror certain parts of my life. Yes. But being drunk on set, no, man. Like I try, I think I tried that once when I was like 20. I was like, well, I'm just looking. I'm just going to get shit fixed yeah. on set. It, you can't. can't. You just can't because you can't maintain <clears throat> any level of focus. And inevitably, you the, the movie or the whatever, the performance will suffer. But no, I just, uh, I just am really, really good at acting like I'm... Do you want to go through your process? It's, yeah, it's, you want it's to hear really it? disgusting. If you want to hear it? <laughs> all right. Well, first of all, there you have to you have to empty your mind of any thoughts whatsoever. <laughs> Hyperventilate, rub your eyes till they feel like they're going to bleed, and 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 basically stick your head between your knees and push like you're going to take a shit. But then at the last minute, make sure you don't take a shit, and then you and then you stand up into the scene, and you. you're dizzy, very dizzy, uh, and I just kind of try to keep that sense memory feeling of like, you know, because when you're really drunk, like when you're the drunkest guy in the room, I think a lot of drunk people like that are just busy trying to not act drunk and I think that's where the humor comes in. That is the heavy, the heavy nose breathing and yeah. the, the over articulating things and like you just like you have no space bubble anymore. Like yeah. You're just in people's faces and you don't realize it. And, uh, and it's not as much about slurring. I think people make a mistake when they get all slurry. Just pushing and so, things out. Yeah. I'm not like that. That was a pretentious Stanislavski answer. A lot of that is from Uda Hagen's uh, viewpoints. Yeah, yeah it's yeah. word for word. A lot of this. I did. I did. I paraphrased mostly, but yeah, I may have. Yeah. You just found him lying there. I, I don't know what he was doing. Your aunt had to bring up Lumpy. Oh, your best man got drunk and died at the wedding. What can I have to use the honeymoon money for the funeral? Our honeymoon? I'm supposed to be in a caftan under a palm tree. Who you hold this? It's Lumpy's. There are only six numbers stored. Two of them are for pizza delivery. The first thing I always look for with scripts is just how natural the dialogue flows, and Ted's really did in, in a very easy way. And mm -hmm. um, yeah, that was what I noticed more than the morbid part. I mean, that's what interested me. Yeah. <clears throat> I really liked the that kind of relished the opportunity to, uh, it was almost like a redemption for me. I've played this drunken buffoon before with no, there's no, you know, B-side to the guy. It's just mm -hmm. like, okay, you're just, you're that asshole or right. whatever. And I've always had to try and find this like, likability or whatever. Mm -hmm. But the likability was built in with this guy. It was like, I get, you, you, you got to see both sides of the coin as yeah. scripted, you know, and then whatever <laughs> else you got to see was kind of uh, icing on the cake. So I like that. I like the idea of the sort of, Redemption of the character, um, yeah. the mis the misdirect, if you will. Yeah, I bet. So now I hope they don't involve dead people. Do you guys have any good wedding stories or any good things that you? I'm tapped. I'm yeah. tapped, man. Three questions deep, and I'm yeah. tapped. <clears throat> um, Should I go with Lindy again? Should I go with? Yeah, let's talk with Lindy. <laughs> no, I can't. Uh, well, uh, Tyler recently outed his uh, alcoholic aunt Lindy, uh, but we we've exhausted that. I think I, I um. 
I have an uncle, <laughs> he's not an alcoholic, but uh, he enjoys beer, and his name's Dick Long. So that's just like a fun little tr truth. I never even thought about that fun yeah. element of your name. Yeah. Uh, he, the jokes. I got, I got schlong, all the JJ schlong they'd call me, and I, and I was uh, always, you know, because that can really sting when you're in high school and you're really sensitive and insecure and like, like four foot ten. About having a long dick. About having, yeah, when it's JJ so, schlong. when it's, when it's not ironic. Right. Um, <laughs> it's horrible. Stupid. It's horrible, yeah. yeah. It's a horrible then, thing to do to a And the, it raises the expectations, too. In a yeah. Lot of ways. Um, but my uncle, I would say to him, <clears throat> I remember saying to him when I was going through this, uh, struggling with having this. Burden. Um, I, I said, "Well, did the kids make fun of you?" They, I mean, well, how did you respond? When they, and he said, "What do you mean?" <laughs> I was like, "Well, you know, he's Dick Long. And he was in the military too, so like, like huh? they call roll call him Long Dick." And, and, uh, <laughs> and it was as if he had, it had never occurred to him. I don't know if he's funny. I don't know if he was just being really dry. Uh, but I think I think it just hadn't occurred to him, and so I started. I looked it up, and Dick. I think back then it was much more common. Oh yeah, 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 it was, yeah, yeah. It, it wasn't as you know, it, was, it wasn't part of the vernacular for. Pretty hip name, Enos. I think, for a while there. Dick. Enos too. Enos was Enos? a name. Enos. Enos was a name, for a while. I don't think I don't know who's calling their kid Enos. Anymore. I don't know. My mom went to school with a guy named Othmeyer Mandeschitz, and I always thought that was like <laughs> they, he was he was he was blessed with the like the built-in yeah, handle I mean, of, of Mandeschitz, and the parents went hmm. What can we what can couple we, up yeah. with managers to make this kid's life easier? We'll take the sting off the managers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's, let's, let's pull a little, a little focus off managers. <laughs> like a boy named Sue. Othmeyer. <laughs> Othmeyer. Yeah, that's a good one. A boy named Mandeschitz. <laughs> that's my last question. I'm a huge horror fan myself, so mm -hmm. I just want to ask you both about um, you know, an upcoming project, maybe. And obviously, you have Tusk coming out. With, uh, well, with, uh, coming Tusk. Coming out, yeah. yeah. I'm not sure it's coming out. <laughs> No, I, so obviously you've seen the walrus suit, you know, how excited are you to team up with Kevin Smith and do all that stuff? And also, Tyler, I want to get in, I'm a huge Tucker and Dale fan. Cool. Oh, yeah. <clears throat> if that sequel that was proposed is ever going to happen. Yeah, gonna... are they doing that? Well, hey, let me, I'm going to formulate my okay. answer carefully. You take the walrus um, one for now. Yeah, I, I got fitted for uh, um, the suit. Bob <clears throat> Kurtzman's doing the special effects makeup and he's just, he's Sweet, the best. Sweet, man. Yeah, he, I, I did, and I hadn't, they did the whole face thing, and it, it had been since I had all these flashbacks, these Jeepers Creepers flashbacks, because oh that was the last time I did that, <clears throat> they made a prosthetic, and, uh, and the technology, just tell how long ago it was that the technology is so much better, it's, they use like a silicone, it, it dried a lot quicker. It's not like it. three hours in a garage in the valley, yeah. with like the, yeah, that, there's like the plaster on your face. Straws in your nose. Yeah. That's not fun. Yeah, none of that, this took about, <clears throat> it was still, it was about 30 minutes, so uh, I saw the suit, it looks incredible. I mean, I don't know what it's going to be, but it's going to be interesting in, in, in an entertaining way. Uh, I love Kevin. We both work with Kevin. Yeah, Kevin's great. He's just, he's you know, one of a kind. <clears throat> so I'm, I'm looking forward to it. And Michael Parks, you know. Yeah. Excited. Yeah. Uh, I didn't think about my answer at all, by the way, while I was sitting here. <laughs> You're so, so gross. I'm going to do it on the fly here. No, the, uh, the Tucker and Dale uh, sequel is like the most elusive thing that <laughs> in my life right now. It's like, it's happening, then it's not happening, it's happening. But honestly, Alan and I and Eli uh, kind of made an unspoken agreement. Eli directed? No. Eli Craig. Oh, yeah, oh he wrote, I thought wrote, wrote oh, and directed. Okay. Yeah, he, he, he's doing a huge I thought Eli now. Whitney, you meant. No. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> Eli Craig. Did Cotton Gin, did he also different? Direct? No, 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 different, the different, different fella, okay, different right. fella. Uh, <laughs> He is doing a huge movie right now called Little Evil, which is his new uh, uh, script, and he's doing oh, it with wow. like Paramount. And big deal, but we keep getting really, really close to like an idea for it, and uh, just get foiled in one, one way or another. But uh, yeah, we, we've made good. a d decision that like we will never ever put a sequel out there for the sake of putting a sequel out there. You know, it's, it's got it's got to be amazing. Well, that was my joke <laughs> really idea funny. years ago. <laughs> really? I, there was Tucker and Dale goes to Yale, and then there was Tucker <laughs> versus Dale. We thought that might be a funny, funny. finish up that we <laughs> one of us has to fucking die. <laughs> go to <laughs> Yale. Tucker and Dale go to Yale. We have some great ideas. That but it's just a Hispanic person mispronouncing Yale. Yeah, yeah. Tucker yeah. and Dale go to Yale. A <laughs> uh, couple gringos <laughs> go to Yale in Tijuana. Uh, we uh, we have some ideas. Uh, that are really great, I think, and I think eventually if the movie keeps like very oddly gaining speed and it's been like four years now, it's a lot of people are just now hearing about it. So I don't know, I don't know mm. if there's like a shelf life on 
you know, when I don't think we're in a big rush to make the sequel. So we'll I see. think Alan Tudyk is the most underrated actor in the world. He was like, yeah, such a versatile. <clears throat> Have you worked with him? Yeah, yeah, we did dodgeball and then oh he right, did, of course um, he did. That. Yeah, Pirate Steve. Pirate Steve. Yeah. Oh, he's the best. That guy is incredible. I was watching um, mm. Wreck It Ralph. Have oh yeah, yeah, yeah. The, the King. I, the King. I, I couldn't believe he, that was him. Couldn't place him. He does all those voices on uh, uh, that. What's that show? Nick Kroll, the cartoon. Tim. Tim, Tim and not Tim and Eric. No, Tim. The life, 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 life and times of Tim. Yeah, he plays like a like a guys, African American female hooker on that. Like you I would can never that, know. I can that actually see that. Yeah, you can see that. Yeah, <laughs> but he's amazing. The validity that he lends to any project is like so good. very very sought after. So busy guy. Two Dick. Also, probably a tough name to have growing up. Two Dick. Two Dick. Again, though, with him when I brought that up. Yeah. Nothing. I hadn't really thought about it. No, what I was mean? like, really? Like, Did you ever get like two Dick? And he was like, huh? <laughs> really? Yeah. <laughs> Two enus. Two enuses. You know how we could afford Mexico? Lumpy gave me the money. He got us a honeymoon, and I can't even get his funeral right. Careful on the ice. Hold on! I don't know what he's doing. I don't know where he's working. I don't really know anything about the guy, as it turns out. Where are you going? Anywhere but here. I don't know what you want me to say. He was my best friend. He wasn't your best friend. He was your oldest friend. There's a difference.